What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today I'm going to be doing the camera comparison between the Pixel 6 Pro and the new Google Pixel 7 Pro. So, the camera setup looks pretty similar, so I want to see if this is actually the same camera, or if it's been upgraded this year. So, let's not waste any time, we're just going to jump right into it, and we're going to see if the Pixel 7 Pro is worth the upgrade. Let's do it. The Pixel 6 Pro is on the left, and the Pixel 7 Pro is on the right. I know the intro was different, but thought this would be easier to follow along. I took so many pictures because I was so excited for the Pixel 7 Pro camera this year, but after looking at so many side by side, I think this will have Pixel fans split in how they feel, and don't worry, I will explain throughout the video. So let's start with the new camera features of the Pixel 7 Pro. What's actually different, the first thing you will notice is the difference in the zoom options. Here is the main sensor shot, then there is the 2x crop shot, which we will talk more about in a second. The Pixel 7 Pro has a 5x option as the next zoom instead of the 4x that is on the Pixel 6 Pro. You will see a slight difference there. Here is the 10x hybrid zoom from both and it's super impressive since this is not a dedicated lens so Google did a great job with this. And here is the max zoom, the 20x for the Pixel 6 Pro and now the Pixel 7 Pro gets a bumped up 30x zoom and it does not look bad at all. While I'm seeing some slight improvements here, the images look extremely similar and that is to be expected I guess because it looks pretty much like the same camera setup. You can notice though on the 2x crop from the main sensor that it is a little sharper. If you didn't know, these phones do not have a 2x telephoto. Here is another 2x crop shot from across the lake and if you look right here, you can see more detail on the Pixel 7 Pro. Throughout the zoom ranges, you can see a very slight increase in detail in this scenario. Let me know if you can tell the difference, but even on the 10X, you really, really have to look because most people are going to think that is pretty much the same image and I wouldn't blame you. What I do love about the zoom experience on the Pixel 7 Pro this year is just like Samsung devices, when you zoom in to get the photo after a certain zoom range, you get the stabilization with a pop-up preview on the right-hand corner. Pixel 6 Pro owners know that it can be tough getting that shot without stabilization, so this is a great addition. The Pixel 7 Pro finally gets a dedicated macro mode and it does a good job. And while I personally don't use macro mode too much in my everyday life, it is nice to have. They both get great depth of field without macro mode. These are from the same distance and it's really hard to tell the difference. But once you kick in that macro mode, you can definitely tell the difference. But in a situation like this, it can really come in handy for food shots. Without macro, I guess you just need to pull back to take the picture. Now this is from the same distance, so you get an idea of how close you can get with the Pixel 7 Pro. Of course, you can just use the telephoto if you want with the Pixel 6 Pro like I did here if you want to kind of achieve the same thing. But besides the occasional over sharpening like you see on this orange, this is a catch up feature I feel Google needed and now it's here, so that's great. Another improvement that is very welcome is the Pixel 7 Pro now gets a much wider field of view on the ultra wide camera. See here, it's all included with the new wider camera. Now you can see it here clearly, the Tusker House sign is almost out of the frame on the 6 Pro, where on the 7 Pro it is well within the frame. Again, another catch up feature to put it in line with other flagships, but I'm really enjoying that extra field of view. Now that I've shown you the new features, let's talk about the overall daytime images. There are some minor changes with the white balance and overall approach of the photos, but again, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I don't think that most people will be able to tell a difference at all during the day if you've upgraded, and that is expected because Google really didn't make false claims of a brand new sensor or anything. They are just doubling down on computational photography and really taking advantage of the existing sensors. I did notice that portrait mode looks more natural right out of the camera. The blur is tamed down, which I appreciate because that much background separation, in my opinion, doesn't make it look natural. And the Pixel 7 Pro looks like it's making more of an effort to move towards roll off. Look at how the rocks here are still visible, doing a much better job on the fence, and the background is more clearly visible. So I like this much better, so portrait mode users will be happier. Even when you get closer, the background is much more visible, so I like this approach straight out of the camera, even though I think you can change this when you edit. I think that some might even think that the images are worse due to the extra contrast approach on the Pixel 7 Pro. As a result, you get darker shadows, and I know some people might love that, and some people might not like it as well, so it all depends on personal preference, so let me know in the comments what you think. I think that the comments are going to be split for sure, but in a blind camera test, I'm pretty sure that brighter and more colorful wins. I even did a lot of pixel peeping, and I think that the general public might even see the images as less sharp. For example, take a look at this leaf. 
Now, I'm not saying that you won't get some better images. Take a look at this food shot. They look very similar, but when you punch in, you can see that there's more in focus with the meat. The steak looks about the same, maybe a little more detailed, but look at the chicken back here. It is a more refined shot. Sometimes you will get more defined shots too with the front facing camera, slightly better skin tones with better highlight control. This one I think has a little better white balance on the skin on the Pixel 7 Pro, but it isn't wildly different. And you can even say on this front facing portrait shot that the Pixel 6 Pro looks sharper, so that's what I've noticed. The reason why I'm taking this approach to this comparison is I want you to have the right mindset and expectation if you're planning to upgrade. If you want the new features, which are great, then upgrade for that. But if you're looking for a drastic image quality change during the day, you won't find it here unless things drastically change with software updates down the road. So if things do change, I'll definitely follow up. Let's talk about video before moving into low light this year. The Pixel 7 Pro gets 10-bit HDR video, and that's really hard to show here since it shows up like this when you put it on your computer. But if I force it into Rec. 709 color space, then you can see that there is more shadow detail and slightly higher dynamic range. I like the natural colors that you have to work with here too because it is a flatter look in post, and the beauty of 10-bit is that you can really work with the colors after the fact. Like for example, if you force it into Rec. 2020 color space, you can really see the vibrancy in the colors, but for the general public, I would probably just leave this off. It is off by default. You will have to turn this on if you want it. Video options are pretty much the same, 4K 60 frames per second at the highest, which is in line with most major flagships, but I will have to keep it real here. I don't see a difference at all when it comes to the video quality here with HDR off. So let me know if you can see a difference. I wanted to show you the entire gamut here. Here is the ultra wide. Then back to the main sensor again, very similar. Then we will go into the 2X crop mode. If anything, the 6 Pro looks more sharpened. Then we will switch to the 4X on the 6 Pro and the 5X on the 7 Pro. That little extra reach is nice on the 7 Pro. The video does look sharper on the 7 Pro at this focal length. I can't end this without showing you the new cinematic video mode. I'm sure that they could do this on the Pixel 6 Pro as well via software, but it looks like it's exclusive to the Pixel 7 Pro at this time. And close up, it does a pretty good job. And to really test this, I wanted to track the subject while walking. And while it did lock and it did work, it is not the most natural looking cinematic mode that I've seen. So stay tuned to see the next video with the comparison with the S22 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. That is a good one. You're not going to want to miss that. And this is an example of walking stabilization with 4K 30 frames per second. If you look closely, the Pixel 7 Pro is doing a better job picking up less of the micro jitters and keeping the entire frame more stable. But it isn't a drastic difference. So let me know if you can tell a difference or not. At night, it's again all about the subtle differences, besides one thing which I will get to in just a minute, but the differences here are much more noticeable than the daytime in my opinion. I am noticing better dynamic range in handling brighter signs like this, and even the M&M signs look more defined on the building. I appreciate the more accurate skin tones too. There's slightly more saturation on the Pixel 7 Pro shot here, and I think that helps a lot right out of the camera. The Pixel 7 Pro did a better job here of balancing the entire shot, even though this is a tricky one. But just like the daytime with portrait shots, look back here, you can clearly see the sign where it's blurred on the Pixel 6 Pro. I think skin tones and front facing camera shots are going to be a preference thing. Some people like the brighter skin tones and some people don't. The Pixel 6 Pro keeps up well here, so I don't think you'll get FOMO if you don't upgrade for the newer front facing camera. The detail is pretty much the same on both in multiple lighting scenarios. You could even say that the Pixel 6 Pro is a little sharper on my face here in night mode, and even the same here on this portrait shot. Again, all of this could change later, but as of right now at launch, I'm not seeing a big difference in selfie quality, but in scenarios like this, it does make better choices in white balance, so it's nice to see Google software improving. You will see some better photos at night like this leaf. It is slightly brighter. This is a best case scenario where if you punch in, you can see more detail here, especially in this area. Look at the texture difference. That is impressive under night mode. But in most day-to-day -day pictures, just like the daytime, you're not going to see a huge difference. Even cropping in heavily into this balloon, there is a slight difference, but you have to determine if this is enough for you to upgrade. 
This is a good example. The texture on this building is a good way to test the improvements. When you crop in, the panels do look a little sharper and so does the fence. But again, think if you're coming from a Pixel 6 Pro, the images are going to be pretty similar. So I want you to set the expectation of not a drastic difference, but more of a retuned and refined image. Like here, the clouds look smoother and not as digital. The white balance, while it might not show you the most accurate replication, looks so much better here on the Pixel 7 Pro. The 2x shot here is more accurate of the scene on the Pixel 6 Pro, so some software tuning is still definitely needed on the 7 Pro. The zoom range is a good example to show you the difference. Here is the main shot for reference. Then there is the 2x crop shot. Google did tout that the 2x method was updated and here it seems like it does work. The building is sharper and look at the buildings down here, it is so much clearer so that is good to see. The 4x versus 5x is disappointing from the 6 Pro and much much better on the 7 Pro, a very usable zoom lens to use at night which is a great thing to see. What's really cool is I was actually able to use the maximum zoom on both with a little bit of an exposure compensation to capture a shot of the moon. The killer reason why I think you should consider an upgrade is because of this, the night mode exposure times. When I hit the shutter button at the same time, you can see that the Pixel 7 Pro finishes in a second or so earlier. And I know most of you are thinking that doesn't even matter at all, but it really does when you're taking a lot of pictures. Here is another scenario. Check the exposure time on the Pixel 6 Pro. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, that is a crazy long exposure where the 7 Pro finished in half the time. This was my biggest gripe with the Pixel 6 Pro and they fixed it with the Tensor G2 on the Pixel 7 Pro. I mean, you can almost take two night mode pictures in the time that the Pixel 6 Pro takes to capture just one photo under that same lighting scenario. And what's great is you get to pick your exposure time as well from an auto to a maximum, giving you more light for a better photo if you have that steady hand or if you have a tripod. To put it all into perspective, the Pixel 7 Pro's maximum exposure time here was faster than the auto time on the Pixel 6 Pro. So if you're a night shooter, this is a big reason to upgrade. The video at night on the main sensor also looks better. I think the extra contrast really helps in reducing the noise and giving the user a cleaner video in low light conditions. Switching to the ultra wide, the video looks slightly worse on the Pixel 7 Pro, but they aren't too different. You can see the big difference though on the perspective, so much more in the frame. The 2x of course looks the same as the main sensor, but surprisingly, the 4x zoom on the Pixel 6 Pro looks cleaner at night than the 5x video does on the Pixel 7 Pro. Sorry for the horrible framing here, but I was just trying to get it onto a non-moving subject. It is so much softer, so I hope that Google can improve this in a future software update. My biggest surprise was with HDR video at night. Of course, you'll still have to convert this if you're transferring to your computer, but if TikTok, Instagram, and other social media platforms optimize for this, you might want to use HDR video at night because it looks much better. It's so much brighter. I was really blown away by this, so let me know what you think. So there it is, the Pixel 6 Pro versus the Pixel 7 Pro. I say if you have zero complaints about your Pixel 6 Pro as a phone, then keep it another year. I say if you're leaping just for the camera alone, you need to think about if these refinements and new features are actually worth it to you. But if you want a brighter screen, better battery life, little snappier performance, and comforts like face unlock, then take those along with the camera updates and use those as a measure for the upgrade as a whole. If you do that and set your expectations straight, I think you'll have a much happier experience knowing what you're getting into. The Pixel 7 Pro, don't get me wrong, has a great camera system and you'll see what it can do versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Galaxy S22 in the next video. I will see you there.